Hi, I'm back here in Google Sheets with another video, and in this one I'm going to be talking about a particular formula which I've used in a couple of projects and walking you through how to implement it in your own. So it's an array formula which uses index and match to return a value where other values in that row match given criteria. And it should return all of the values in rows where those other values match the criteria, not just the first result. So the formula uses a couple of other functions which you might not be familiar with, but we'll go through them individually. And that would be the if error function, small function, if function, and the row function. I'll start by showing how the function actually behaves. So up here we have a table of results, and up here we have some search terms. The first search term is referenced by the formula, so if I change the value in this cell, uh, then the formula will look up something else. This search term is actually uh, directly specified within the formula, but that could also be a variable search term if you wanted that to be contingent on user input as well. I've used a hard-coded search term just to demonstrate how that would work if you wanted to implement that as well. So what I want my function to do is go looking on my invoice history sheet for any invoices which have the specified customer name, as well as having a status of unpaid. And I'll come back to my test sheet, and we can see that in my results, where I have my formula, we have just one result, 645. And if we come back to the invoice history, we can see that invoice number 0645 is the only one that matches that customer name and also has unpaid in the status field. If I change the customer name to something else, you can see that the results table is populated with two values, 646 and 644, which we have over here. So these are the unique invoice numbers, which are attributed to Red Sun Holdings and are both unpaid. Now if we paid off one of these invoices and return to the test sheet, we can see that that value is no longer there. If we pay off the other one as well, then our results field is empty. So this will automatically update whenever the data over here is changed. Okay, so I'm going to break this formula down piece by piece and show you how each works and what kind of result we get. The first thing we want to do is specify our search term, which is this guy here, uh, that's G3. And we want to see if that value exists anywhere in this column. So we'll call that D7 to uh, D20. Okay, so this is the text of our search term. If you're not sure what the dollar signs mean, uh, they just mean that these values are fixed and they won't change if you copy the formula from one cell to another. Um, typically, if you have a formula in this cell, for example, um, this cell equals this cell. And let's say that that is uh, one, two, three. So that's going to match that. And if I copy that formula down to the next cell, it's actually going to be referencing the cell underneath rather than this cell here because it's changing its reference cell based on its new position where it's been pasted. And if we want to avoid that, we can simply put the dollar signs into the index and then when we copy the formula the reference doesn't actually change so we're looking up cell g3 that's this guy in invoice history d7 to d20 which is this range here and the equals operator simply tests to see if this value exists anywhere in this range however for this search term to work properly, we need to specify that this is an array formula, and so that we're treating these filters as an array. All we're doing is putting array formula at the start, 
and enclosing that in parentheses. And so that's the first component of our formula. If I take this and copy it and make it a true formula, we can see what the results are going to be. Okay, and the formula has found this filter term in the given range. But we now need to add a second condition to check for any invoices which are unpaid. So we'll delete that guy. So here is my expanded formula. We've got the original array formula and its criteria. And I've added the star symbol, which in this context acts a little bit like a AND operator. And we've added a second condition. What we're doing here is we're checking to see if this range contains this string, unpaid. And even though the star symbol acts like an arithmetic operator, it still works in this context because we're not returning the search terms or any of the values in this range. What we're doing is returning the conclusion of these questions. So we're asking, does this term exist in this range? And does this range include this term? And the formula is going to come back to us with an answer for both of these questions. And the answer isn't going to be yes or no. The answer is going to be a true false. Or as the software understands it, it's going to be a one if it's true or a zero if it's false. And so essentially we're generating either a zero or a one for both of these questions. And then we're multiplying those numbers together. And so effectively what this is doing is carrying out a, a Boolean calculation. With Boolean algebra, there are only two values to worry about, and that's your zero and your one. You have a range of different operators. You can add these together. You can multiply them or you can subtract them, which obviously always equals zero. And so that's why in the context of what we're doing here, the star acts like an AND operator, because only if this is true and this is true, will it give us any kind of result. So we'll paste this formula into the next cell and make it a true formula. And we can see we get a result of one. However, in order to get a result from every matching row in the table, we need to use the match function to return us the row numbers. And to help us do that, we're going to be using an if function. I'll copy my formula down here. And we're adding an argument match and then row. And here we'll be specifying the same row range, which we specified in our search terms. But the column range isn't really important in this context. So I'm just going to be using A. And then we're adding another argument, which just gives us the row number. OK, so here is my match function. And this has two arguments. Effectively, what this does is it causes A7 to be referred to as row 1. And so what we have returned to us is an array of 13 rows, numbered 1 through 13. It's a bit tricky to understand, but you're simply putting the same range. And the range isn't really important. It just has to be the same size as these guys. The column itself doesn't matter. Effectively, we're temporarily renumbering those rows. And this match function is going to be passed as an argument of the if function, which we're about to put in. And this effectively is what's going to happen if this condition, or these two conditions, are true. And that's going to return us a matching row number for every row in which these two conditions are met. So we'll add the if function in now. That comes just ahead of the first filter term. And we also need to add a false argument. That's what the if function is going to return if the first argument is false. And that's just going to be an empty string. Now we can close off that if function. And now we can take a look at what this does when I enter it as a formula. And there we go. So we only get one result this time and it's only the positive results. That's all we're returning. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is adjust these results from smallest to largest, and we're doing that using the small function, and that comes just before the if function. And the small function has two arguments. We've just seen the first one, and the second argument is going to be how it arranges the results when it gets them. 
And for this second argument, what we're going to be doing is specifying the row function and the A1 cell. And you'll notice that that's not a fixed value, that's a variable value. Uh, and I'll explain why that's important later on. We'll delete the result we've got here and paste this as a function. Oh, and I've just noticed that I have an issue with my merged cells. I probably shouldn't have done that in the first place. So I'm just going to make some results rows here that aren't merged vertically. All right, so we'll try that again, taking this formula and pasting it here. We get one. However, if we select the cell that this formula is in and grab hold of the little corner of it, and drag it down a bit, we'll get some more data. Now remember that uh, the A1 specified in the small argument was not fixed. We can take a look at what's going on here. If I select the second cell down, we can see that based on its changed location, it's now in row A2. And that will be true of all of the rest of res the results down here. And if we take a look at the invoice history, we can see that Red Sun Holdings occupies the first two cells, and the third one is somebody else, and everything below that is blank. So where I've opened up this formula into these cells below, um, we're getting results for all of them, and the third one doesn't match my criteria, and the rest of them are blank, so they obviously do not match either. I will copy my formula and we'll add some more stuff. And here finally is where we're specifying what it is that we're trying to look up on the destination sheet. And what is it that we want to return from here? Well, I want to see the invoice number, which has not been paid from the customer that I specify. So we're interested in the range A7 down to A20. And so I'll edit my formula here to include that range as an index. Again, we're putting this at the front just behind array formula and using the index function. And we're specifying the range that has the data that we want to see. The index function isn't terribly difficult to understand. We're only specifying a range to index. And so effectively, we can put one in this cell and use this as our range and we get an index of that range. You can also include offsets in your index, but we aren't doing that at the moment. And I'm adding in my closing parentheses for the index function. And we can copy this and paste it as a formula to see what result we get. And we have a result 0646, which is this value here. Excellent. If we come back to the test sheet and we expand this range, we get 0645 as well, which is the next one down for Red Sun, which is unpaid. If I were to pay that, then this row does not match the criteria which I've specified. And we'll come back here to see that we don't have a result in this cell. However, we don't want to see these errors if there's no valid data to show. So we'll add an if error condition to this formula just before index. And we can close that off. The if error function is pretty straightforward. We simply give it something to do. That might be look up a value or do some kind of uh, calculation. Um, and if it's unable to do that because the value is out of bounds, um, then we can tell it to not return us this ugly result here. Um, but to do something else instead. If we don't specify a second argument for the if error, then it just assumes we don't return anything at all, and we get a blank cell, which is what we want to see. So I'll copy this guy as a function, and we have our first result, and as always, we'll expand this range. And now we have two results, but we don't have any errors down here where the data did not match we only have our positive results. And we can come and check that by adding this customer to the third line. And we can see that we get a third result. Now, if I take this person 
and paste them into the first and the third rows and we can change our search term. We can see that our values down here have changed, but they're not divided by this, this line that Red Sun Holdings occupies. We're simply given a list from smallest to largest of all of the different invoice numbers which that person has outstanding with no gaps in between them. Now that we have this formula built, we might like to modify it just a little bit in order to get a slightly different result. In the adjacent column in our results field, I'll simply paste it as it is, but we actually want to get a result from the total due column, which is column L, and all we need to do is change this first index range to column L, and we get our dollar value of the total returned to us. I'll just format these as currency and expand this down here. Uh, and now we have the corresponding total due for each of these invoice numbers. If I add Nick to the third line or the middle line, which has a total due of 260, then we can see we get 260 returned here as well. And you might like to do that with any of the other values in this sheet or any other that you're building. You might like to also specify the date that the invoice was entered or the number of days that it has been lapsed by. And all you need to do is change this index range here. Now, if you want to specify two user-defined search terms, at the moment, this is hard-coded into the formula. We can do that quite easily. We're just going to leave this string in here and we're going to take our formula and replace unpaid with a cell value. And that's going to be G4. We'll need to specify that in the results column for the total due as well. And as always, we'll drag these down to the cells below. And now we can change unpaid to paid. And we get a result of all of the paid invoices. And we might even, to save us typing in this field, like to set a data validation of a list of items. So we can simply choose those from our drop down here. Okay, so that's how you can use an array formula using index and match to look up two fixed or user-defined search terms on a separate sheet in the same row. And if those two criteria are met, then we can fetch another value from that row. And we can get results from every row in that sheet, or at least in the range which we specify. So any rows that have matching criteria will give us a value. I'm going to share a cleaned up version of this sheet so that you can play around with all of the individual sections and see what kind of results you get so that you can implement a similar formula in your own project. As always, if you get stuck or you have any questions, leave me a comment. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.